Hey guys, what's up? So here's my truck broken down on the side of I-90 in Washington State, exit 78. So what happened, I was just driving, everything was normal, and then it just shuts off. I try to start it again, and it runs for like two seconds and shuts off right away. So I coasted all the way down about, maybe about a mile. I was going like 30 miles already over there, and I barely got enough speed to get into here. So I was fortunate about that. But yeah, um, today's Thursday, uh, I think it's like 4 p.m. And uh, my truck broke down around 12, I believe. And my buddy was actually driving. He was driving to Eastern Washington to go camping and he's a diesel mechanic. Um, and he was able to kind of go over everything with me and uh, see if he can help me out. So, so far, we checked pretty much everything. We checked all the fuel, all the fuel filters, all the fuel lines, uh, the fuel pumps, make sure everything is running, make sure it's getting fuel everywhere. Because at first it kind of felt like it was a fuel issue because it would start but it would shut off. But at the same time, I didn't think it was because if it wasn't getting enough fuel, then it would just not start at all. But it kept starting and starting and starting. It just shut off automatically. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. Um, one of the things we did, we took off the VGT and uh, apparently if the VGT gets stuck, uh, it's gonna shut the truck off every time you start it also. But since we took it off, now I have to recalibrate it, which kind of sucks. But at least uh, he's able to, um, to give me a computer. My wife is uh, right now picking it up. She's gonna bring me an ECM also, which I think is the actual issue. But she's gonna bring me a computer to recalibrate it. And uh, let's show you guys what I, did, what I did so far. So I took off the ECM. This is what it sounds like it is. Um, because I checked all the wiring, I checked all the cables, nothing is loose, everything seems solid, nothing is corroded. Um, I didn't go too deep into there, but everything looks good on the outside. But if this doesn't work, then I will have to go a little bit deeper into all the wiring and see maybe if something is corroded. But I took off this fuel pump because there's a little gear in there. If you don't, uh, pretty much if it breaks, it's not gonna uh, give fuel to the truck. I guess it has like two fuel pumps. It has that fuel pump and then it has the electrical one. And yeah, that one was good. Um, so this is really the only thing that we kind of got stuck on is the ECM. So he's going to give me a new ECM. And we're going to try it out and see if it's going to fix the issue or not. Which I really hope it will. Because if it doesn't, it's going to suck. Because then I'll be kind of out of options. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at. And... This is the second time this truck actually broke down on me. First time was, uh, I don't know, what the heck, we have a little coolant leak here. I didn't even notice that. That's interesting. I gotta fix that. That literally, like, just happened because I was, uh, I was working around this engine the whole entire time and I did not see that. Okay, maybe I'll tighten it up a little bit. It's actually leaking quite a bit. That's weird. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is the second time the truck broke down on I me. Mean, the first time actually happened in Washington too. I'm, I'm really fortunate that it keeps happening in Washington State where I live and it's not that far for me to uh, have my wife bring me whatever I need. But my radiator cracked at the top and it was just blown cool and everywhere. And I was barely able to get to Ellensburg, Washington to Love's and they actually replaced the radiator for me. But I had to go buy a new radiator from Bellingham, Washington. That's the only place in Washington state that they had a radiator, which is crazy. Like out of all the places, only Bellingham had it, which is a pretty, like took a three hour drive away from Love's uh, Ellensburg. But yeah, that was the first time it got me stranded. The radiator got that fixed. Everything is good. And this is the second time. And this time it's a little bit harder to really know what's going on because it's not really a clear issue like oh that's that's wrong that's broken or whatever here you kind of have to diagnose everything kind of go through the the fuel system the wiring and everything so yeah guys that's where we're at so i'm just waiting on her right now to stop by and bring me what i need yep so guys guess what truck is running so this was the code that popped up. 
power supply loss of the ignition. So pretty much what this code means is that you're not getting enough voltage to your ECM, which could mean two things. Either your ECM is bad or you're not getting enough voltage because usually this code pops up for either or. And in my case, um, the ground was bad. So I'll show you guys what I did. You guys can see that but pretty much I ran those two wires um, to the e from the ECM to the block and the block has a really good ground and now my truck runs perfect so that was very interesting and the ECM that I got it didn't fit what on the little uh, when you plug it in there's like a little uh, like an L-shaped uh, pin and that pin did not match the pin on my truck so yeah kind of was a waste of time but my ECM is good just there's somewhere uh, not enough power going to the ECM and I checked all the wire and I checked every wire almost possible and everything looked good so somewhere I don't know where but there's a, a bad ground but we fixed it temporary so hopefully we'll still make it to our see that yeah, that's fun. Well, somebody's happy the truck is running. She can finally go home, right? Oh, you're so cute. Are you posing for a picture? <laughs> there you go. That's a good picture right there. Give me a hug, baby. Mwah. Mwah. My little princess. What's up, bro? Come here, Ellie. 